semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the proper human diet, all things related to the proper human diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Say hello as you come in, and let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, before I actually get things started here, let me take a quick rundown through here, because Rick is here, and Craig is here. And let's see here. Yep, Craig is here asking Rick how his truck is running. I don't know if Rick got his truck running yet or not. But hello to you, Mikey. And yes, someone can hear me. So we are good to go. And yes, Craig, you did get here before Miss Antlers, but there she is. Uh, let's see here. Good afternoon from Albany, New York, from Cordelia. Alrighty, and Craig says he can hear me. Excellent. As many of you have seen already, because I'm a day late, as if you recall, back in the video where I announced the mystery flavor for Keto Chow, I uh, said that the thing, their, their press release thing was a little confusing, and I was pretty sure it said after November the 30th, which I took to mean December the 1st. So I scheduled my announcement for that flavor today. But apparently it was an 11 o'clock release yesterday. So by now you've seen many videos about the mystery flavor being chocolate malt. But I wanted to go ahead and give you my review of it as well. Now that I'm allowed to say chocolate malt, um, it's very good. No, the mystery flavor was not duck. Um, it's chocolate malt. It's very good. It's very good. Um, I would put it at just under the birthday cake keto chow. But it's above just about everything else I've tried. So it's very good if you were thinking about trying keto chow. Go ahead and, and give that a shot. And as a reminder... The whole reason I'm associated with Keto Chow is you can use the link in the description to get money off using my discount code, SemiRetiredBob. And the primary purpose I am affiliated with Keto Chow is so that you can get a discount on their electrolyte products, the daily minerals, the fasting drops, the electrolyte drops, all of their liquid products that we use pretty much every day on the carnivore diet, or especially those just getting started. So if you need daily minerals or any of that kind of stuff, my discount code is good for that as well. But if you have not, you know, if, if you are one of these people that actually likes Keto Chow, the, the product, you will find that the, the mystery flavor, aka chocolate malt, is very good. He's still watching Creative Soil, says still watching commercials. Okay. Well, hello to you, Creative Soil. I'm glad you're here. And Nikki Thorne is here. Hello to you, Nikki. I'm glad you're here. And chocolate, how disgusting. Like old team. Actually, it's not. I'm old enough to remember old team. This is nothing like old team. We've been duck hunting on weekends, having a tough time eating them. They are like liver almost. Any recommendations on how to cook these things? Yeah, yep, you've talked to the right person. Rick will know how to do that. Perhaps you could ask him and he'll do a duck cooking video for you. And it says you have to feed them duck food if you want a milder flavor. Hello, Jonathan. Carnivore Muscle is in the house. I'm glad you're here. All wild birds taste like liver. I love it. Okay. There you go. Can't do that, Rick. They're wild and migrating through. Okay. Why? Keto chow? Just eat hamburger. Yes, I agree with that. But keto chow, let's say you have dental surgery. And you can't chew beef for a few days. What are you going to do? Put your beef in a blender? You could do that. Um, if you go back and watch some of my other Keto Chow videos, you'll find that 
it's a it's a good substitute for times you can't eat beef and they do actually have a thing called keto chow core which is made with beef protein isolate as opposed to dairy protein so it's even closer to what we normally use so um you know it's it's an option if you choose not to use it you don't have to use it but as I said, I've got the discount code for people that are going to use daily minerals and their and their other liquid products. So if you want to try the keto chow, my discount code works for those as well. I wish you lived closer, Rick. We could supply you with lots of ducks. Mm -hmm. I tried to contact Dante. We've talked a few times. It doesn't look like it's going to work out, but we'll see. Uh, what meat will you be having for your holidays? Um, I'm pretty much on a hamburger and egg diet right now. I may go out and get myself a good chuck roast for Christmas. Um, or there are a couple of uh, stores that are still running buy X amount of meat and get a free turkey now that we're in the holiday season. I didn't catch any good sales on turkey right after Thanksgiving, so we'll see what happens. If I get a turkey at a good price, I may cook myself a turkey for Christmas, but we shall see. Um, right now, I don't really have a whole lot of plans. Christmas is, you know, three weeks away or so, maybe four. I don't remember exactly. Three and a half weeks at this point, I think. Um, quail don't taste like liver, Rick. Okay. Yeah, Dante is awesome. He, I saw that he had a live stream going. Um, and his started at uh, 1.30, so it was an hour. And he said it was going to be an hour long, so I suspect he's ending fairly soon. But... That's just one of the things we have to put up with. Everybody seems to be doing live streams these days. So all I can do is keep mine on schedule. And if people show up, they show up. If they don't, they don't. I can still stand, sit here and talk to the camera, just like I do every other day of the week, as I talk to the camera with nobody sitting on the other side. And some Christmas money. Thanks for the help keeping me motivated and informed. Take care. Thank you very much, Mikey. I really appreciate that. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm raising quail. How do you cook them? Yeah, I, I don't know how to cook quail. Get with uh, Rick Charger Mopar. He's pretty good at cooking ducks. And I imagine cooking a duck and a quail are about the same. And I would imagine a quail would be like cooking a smaller chicken. So... I'm guessing that would be about the same as well, but I don't do a whole lot of uh, I don't do a whole lot of live animals yet. After I have some of my own animals, I'll experiment with learning how to cook live animals. But I don't have any animals of my own yet. And Bert has arrived. Hello, Bert. How are you today? Ground beef agrees with my teeth, or what's left of them anyway. Yeah, I understand. I understand completely. Ground beef is very easy to chew up, and eggs are really easy to chew up. I actually, I was going to make a Cooking with Bob video for Sunday, and it just didn't turn out very good. I was, I took some, uh, you know, those pancakes I made the other, a couple weeks ago with uh, egg and pork rinds, and this time I went ahead and took a vanilla cheat unsweetened, Vanilla Keto Chow Core, which they sent me a couple of with my big core bundle package a couple of months ago. And I thought, well, that sort of looks like flour. I'll mix that up. It didn't mix very well with the eggs, and it it just didn't turn out good. I was going to try and make a couple of buns um, to make a couple of cheeseburgers out of it, but it just didn't come out very well. So I'm choosing not to show that footage in this Sunday's video. I'll have to come up with something else. Um, so we live and we learn. Some experiments in the kitchen work, some experiments don't. 
And Rick says, quail are seed eaters. They have a mild flavor. Vegan animals always taste better. Okay. And John is here. Hello, John. How are you doing today? What's the temperature like out there in Boston? I know it's, uh, it was fairly nice here yesterday. It got up to about 45, but they're calling for a high of 35 today. So I've already been out and recorded tomorrow's video. Speaking of recording tomorrow's video, if you guys recall, um, uh, it's been a couple, three weeks ago where I, when I talked about some of the stuff that was uh, coming up in the works and the, the shoe company, um, Fitville, that I've been walking in their hiking shoes and finally got to test those in the snow. They had very good traction, by the way. But I ordered a, they offered to send me another thing because apparently they're very pleased with how the previous promotion went. So the boots came yesterday. I wore them out for the first time today. You can see they got a nice furry lining in them. So they were very warm in the cold temperatures of this morning. I'm not super wild about the Velcro strap closure things, but they seem to work okay. We'll see how they hold up. I've never actually had a pair of Velcro closed shoes that, that held up, so we'll see how these hold up. But they were very warm and very comfortable out walking in them um, this morning. This is not my review of them at all. This is just my first impressions. I kind of like them. They fit very well. I got the the 4X, the, the extra wide as opposed to the wide, because their shoes come in both 2E and 4E variety if you need a wider shoe. And I got those in, and I'll talk about those more. I talk about them briefly in the video that's coming out tomorrow, but I thought I'd share that with you today since I'm sitting in front of the camera. And... The view from this camera is a lot better than the view of them that I got in tomorrow's video on my feet. So they're they're fairly nice. And if you're interested, based on some of my other reviews of their product, I do have a discount, a, a link and a discount code down there. I still have to change the discount code. The, the one that's like BS30 is good for 30% off. And the one that I put in that was good just through yesterday um, she reactivated that code for, I think, the first 40 people that use it. So you can get an extra 5% off if you're one of the first 40 people to use that code. But that's down there if you want to check it out. If not, that's okay, too. Uh, ducks are omnivores. They love meat. Yeah, and just like, you know, we thought... Um, oh... Shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, monkeys. You know, monkeys are, are, are primarily plant eaters, but they will quite happily chomp down on some meat if they find it as well. There's a lot of so-called even vegetarian-style animals that if they get their hands on some meat, will still eat it. Bob, did you do your walk today? Yep, that's tomorrow's video is already recorded. I did my walk today. And I walked in my new boots just to see how they went. I'll let you know tomorrow if my feet hurt or not from walking in the new boots. But uh, that's... I, I walk every day. Actually, it's one of my weekly wins that I talk about tomorrow. I got out in the sub-freezing weather every day this week and got a walk in. We haven't killed enough quail to cook them yet. Collecting them in the freezer, we'll probably put them in the smoker with bacon wrapped around them. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Good afternoon, one and all, from Copper Hill, Tennessee. Hello, Richard. How are you today? I'm glad you're here. And going to buy lots of chuck roast this weekend for $4.99. I know it's more than ground beef, but it's way tastier. Yeah, and there's a couple of stores that are having a sale on some stuff. I may go check those out. We shall see. And Hyla is here. Hello, Hyla from Crafty and Carnivore. She's doing her um, Vlogmas for December again, so don't forget to go check her out. She's, I think she's going to do a vlog every day. I don't know for sure, but she put one out today, so we shall see. 
No. Keto chow does not make a holiday fruitcake flavor, but that's a really good suggestion. I would like a holiday fruitcake flavor, keto chow. Do you like fruit cake, Craig? Yeah, that's a good question. I uh, I personally, I don't like, which why I haven't, I mean, besides being carnivore, I haven't had it in, in probably a decade now. I've tried in the past to, to order some of the fruit cakes that you can get from Amazon, even the more expensive ones, and they're just not right. My mom made fruit cake every year, but it was a process. I mean, she would make it um, about a month before Thanksgiving and have, she would take one thin slice out of it for Thanksgiving, but it still had to sit till Christmas. And she kept every week, she would unwrap it and slice up apples and put apples in the middle of it for moisture, I think, and then wrap it back up. And basically it she made it a month before Thanksgiving, and we didn't really get to eat it until Christmas. But it was really, really good. And I've tried a few of the different kinds on Amazon over the years, and they're just not as good as what my mom makes. So I would have to say I like fruitcake if it's the same as my mom made. Other than that, it's okay, but it's not spectacular. Bob has a Santa hat. Merry Christmas. Yes, indeed. I started wearing this, I think it was just last week's live stream, I started wearing a Santa hat. Got the new background up. It's the holiday season. It's my favorite time of the year. NJ is here. Hello, NJ. How are you today? Um, oh, you guys are just trying to put me off food forever with these things, aren't you? Quail are best when breaded in grains and fried in seed oils. Nothing's better fried in seed oils. If you fry it in tallow or lard, I bet it would be even better. You <laughs> shake and bake. Let's see here. I'm back from Finland. Didn't go as bad as I thought it could. I stayed sort of carnivore for 99% of the day. I got lucky there was a supermarket across the road from the hotel with a salad bar. Okay, great. So you managed to get through your vacation or your, your business trip, I believe it was, to Finland without a whole lot of setback, which is good. And the salad bar had hard-boiled eggs. Excellent. Yes, yes, indeed. And Sylvie is here. Hello, Sylvie. How are you today? I'm glad you're here. And I use fruit to fatten up my ducks and make them flavorful. Yeah, I understand. The one thing, Rick, I mean, I understand that you've never been addicted to sugar. You've never been a fan of sugar. But a few of the things that made life worth living when I was a sugar addict, one of those things was my mom's fruit cake. And it, it was really good. Yes, you would call it duck food, even today, but it was good. 53 in Boston to be. Should be low 40s tonight. It's actually been getting down to the low 20s at night. I'm thinking we're going to hit the teens at some point here in the next week or so, because it's that time of year. It's getting colder out here. Yeah, I bet Rick's uh, ducks are tasting. He says... They are, they taste like steak. Excellent. The show, you sounded like Ed Sullivan when you said shoe. Hmm. All right. Uh, shipping would be too expensive, Craig. Let's see here. You can marinate wild ducks if you don't like the liver flavor. And I'm not sure about shipping frozen goods to Sweden. Okay, I have no idea what you guys are talking about, so I'm just going to skip down a little bit. Uh, we soaked them in salt water. Do you know of a marinade, Rick, or anyone? Oh, you guys are still talking about making ducks. Sour oranges or lime to make, are 
okay, I can see that. Add some sour oranges and limes into the water maybe to soak them. I don't know. The metallic taste is what you need to remove. Salt will not do it. Okay, that's that's good information. I'm glad my dog can walk longer routes again, so I get to walk more too. Excellent, Mikey. Let's see here. Soak the ducks in a sugary barbecue sauce. Um, no. Trying to vlog every day. Thanks, Bob. Yep, good. Good for you. Kind of missed you having uh, crafting carnivorous videos out, but I have seen on your crafting channel that it's that, you know, you've been busy with the homecoming season on your crafting channel, which is your busy time of year for them. So hopefully you've gotten through that now and everything's better. Personally, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like liver, you like sardines. Good for you, Rick. It would take a gallon of sugary barbecue sauce. Okay, let's see here. Ah, John is here. Did someone say fruitcake? I used to love me some fruitcake. Yeah, see, I agree with you, John. I like fruitcake, especially the stuff my mom used to make. You'll have to go back and watch the, the, the previous section of this to find out what I talked about with my mom's fruitcake. But for those of you that are just joining in, I'm not going back over the whole thing again, but the the uh, mystery flavor of keto chow, which as you already know, is chocolate malt. And they still have some left on the website, I'm surprised. So if you like it, go order it. But remember that my code and my link and my discount code are good on the, the, the daily minerals and the, the electrolyte drops and the fasting drops and all that stuff. You know, there's joke floating around, it's been around for years, that there's actually only one fruitcake in the world and people keep re-gifting it year after year after year. So there's just that one fruitcake and nobody actually knows what it tastes like. My favorite time of the year too, yes indeed. I'm Italian and we eat panettone. It's like a fruit cake, but way better. Okay. I will have to take your word for it now. We have mallards, redhead, blue winged teal, and the teal are the mildest. And let's see what we got here. Hi, Bob. I'm from West Virginia. Nice to see you. Hello, Pamela. I'm glad you're here. Um, West Virginia, that's just one state to the south of where I grew up in southeastern Ohio. In fact, you could almost you could almost throw a rock into West Virginia from where I grew up. Yep, I love fruit cake. People used to give me theirs. Now I don't eat anything carbohydrate. I understand. Bob, I have to tell you what my doctor said about carnivore. She said if people ate carnivore, they wouldn't need diabetes medication. She's from India. She works at a major hospital in Boston. Good for her. I'm glad she's woken up. And crafting carnivore, she gifted one semi-retired Bob membership. Um, I'm not sure how that works, but thank you, Crafty. I'm glad you did that. Okay. Um, no, Craig, just because Ohio State is not in the game doesn't mean I'm not going to watch the game. See, that's why you're a Fairweather fan for whatever team it is you follow, because it would even occur to you to not con continue to follow your conference, where I will continue to, to follow my conference, and I will watch that team up north play Iowa. And when it gets to the 14 playoff, I will watch that team up north beat the crap out of everybody else. So someday you'll understand what it means to be an actual fan of a team, Craig. Yep, so busy. It is over, but I always need some downtime to recover after it's over. I understand. 
Less Junk, More Health is here. Hello, how are you today? I'm glad you're here. Okay, so this week I'm not forgetting my eggs. I ate more than probably any other week of my life. I got cravings, so I kept them close in all sorts of forms. Yep. And, of course, Let's Jump More Health is saying hello to everybody. And lives in north central West Virginia. I'm pretty familiar with West Virginia, so if you give me a town name, I'll know where you're from. I'm from extreme southeastern Ohio. Um, West of Parkersburg, but a little east of Athens. Actually, Craig, you can make keto chow ice cream that is extremely low carb. You can, there are many recipes on the keto chow website. Two Crazy Ketos has one. Um, Dr. Kiltz has Kiltz's ice cream. Um, which is mostly carnivore if you throw a little chocolate mold in there. So you can actually make ice cream out of keto chow. In fact, that's one of the major ways that many carnivores that I follow that are mostly carnivore, but they make the, the carnivore style ice cream once in a while. That's how they use their keto chow product. I must be missing out being off fruit as well as cake. Yeah, well, I I am not going to try any fruit cake again this year. It just I, I'm completely off that stuff. Now I have seen some people. I've been watching a lot of Coach Stephen and a lot of those guys over in the UK, and he was talking about since he's been carnivore for seven years, he actually had a little piece of dessert at thanksgiving to see how it affected him and he didn't notice he's like well because you know i've been carnivore for seven years i'm over all of my sugar addictions i am metabolically healthy again so i don't really have any bad reactions i and i have no he said was saying that he has no desire to eat it every day again but the occasional treat once in a while once you get metabolically healed um there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to treat yourself once in a while or something like that. I know that's not popular with all the hardcore carnivores, but, you know, there's the occasional birthday or anniversary or something like that, but you may want to have something, especially if it's your, if it's your one year anniversary and you're sharing the cake topper with your one year old spouse. I didn't say that right. One year spouse. Goose meat is less liver tasting. By the way, ducks love fruit cake. Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm about to throw a nice fatty 20 ounce chuck steak in the air fryer. Good, excellent. I like chuck steaks. And let's see here. Ah, keto simple is here. Good afternoon, Bob and everyone in the chat. Looking forward to tomorrow morning. Yes, for those of you that aren't aware and don't follow Keto Simple, even though I had him on for an interview, I will be on his Saturday morning live stream tomorrow morning at, God, I think it's 7.30 Central Time. I'll have to look and set my alarm. I actually got up early this morning in hopes of getting to bed early tonight so that I don't sleep through the, uh, the live stream with him in the morning if I wake up. I'll be live with Keto Simple on his channel tomorrow morning at, I think it's 7.30 Central. Let me take a quick look at my scheduling book here. And that will tell me for sure. Yeah, 7.30 a.m. Central. What was I thinking when I agreed to do that? I can't watch the Patriots anymore since touchdown Tom Brady left. It's not been the same. Well, because they stink. It's real easy to be a fan of a team when they're winning. It's much harder to be a fan of a team when they're losing. But you're still going, you know, if you're a Patriots fan, then you're a Patriots fan, whether they have, you know, Tom Brady or not. I guess you'll have to make that decision for yourself. When you gift a membership, YouTube randomly picks someone in the chat to be the receiver of the membership. Oh, okay. Excellent. Flemington, West Virginia. 
Hello, Pamela. Yes, Flemington. Okay, yeah, I know where you're at. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Hey, Hila, I've not seen you around in a bit. Yeah, she's, as we were talking about just before you dropped in, her crafting channel, she does mums for the homecoming season down there in Texas. And that takes up a lot of her time. And now that she's had that time, she's gotten some rest in, she's doing Vlogmas for December. So be sure and tune into that and watch it. Let's see here. It's hard for me to understand why anyone would want to imitate the flavors of non-carnivore foods. That's because you've been doing this for 40 years, Rick. You've never been metabolically unhealthy. You've never been addicted to sugar. You're coming from a completely different space. And I understand that. Oh, so did Oklahoma State get into the Big 12 championship game? So what is it? Oklahoma State in Texas? I thought it was Oklahoma in Texas. I didn't watch much of that last weekend. I know I'm trying to get back into the community. I have your live for tomorrow set, but I would probably still be sleeping. Yes, indeed. Charger Mopar, the 40-year carnivore. If I eat heart attack fries, they have no bad reactions either. I'm wondering if it didn't if it didn't gift the membership to Rick, because his name is showing up in green now. So he must have been the one that got the gift membership. Let's see here. Yes, you can catch the replay. Cordelia, Bob, were you a member of Blackberry's PhD group the entire time you were on Carnivore from the beginning of your journey? Yes. Yes. Well, I joined Dr. Barry's group about a month into it. Um, so I've been a member of Dr. Barry's group uh, since about June of last year. And speaking of Dr. Barry's group, if you haven't, uh, I haven't talked about that in a while. You know, it's, I forget exactly how you get there. It's, uh, well, if you go to any Dr. Barry video, there's a link in the description for his private group. If you're going to invest in anything to get support for the carnivore diet, I highly recommend Dr. Barry's private group. It's five bucks for the basic package, the basic level. And that gets you access to Dr. Barry and Misha and all of the PhD coaches, plus all the chats that are going on. Um, an extra live video, plus some of the coaches go live inside the group from time to time. You get an awful lot for your five bucks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. Yeah, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. That's about how far behind I am. All right, time to order some food. I'm out of ground meat. I don't want to run low on tenderloin again. I understand completely. I know all about that living in Indianapolis and following the cult since Manning left. Yeah, and whoever that was that they got right after Manning looked like he was going to be another great quarterback, but the big problem that caused, I believe, Peyton Manning's career to get cut short, and um, I can't remember the kid's name, but the guy that came in after him is Indianapolis never got an offensive line to protect him, so those quarterbacks were taking a beating. You can watch the OSU pregame when you finish the Keto Simple Live. It'll get you fired up for the OSU game. No, OSU's not playing this week. Oklahoma State might be playing, but they're not the real OSU. They're that fake one from down there in a, in a state where nobody really lives. Uh, 
I mean, knowing what I know about the rankings, I suppose I should be an Oklahoma State fan tomorrow, though, because that will knock Texas off their one loss, which will clear the way for maybe Ohio State to get in the playoffs. But at this point, I'm not sure I even want that. I think I'd rather just go to the Rose Bowl and play the loser of the Oregon-Washington game. Oh, yeah, Mike is here. Happy birthday to Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you today? I've been a Patriot fan since the Grogan days, then Eason, then Bledsoe. If it wasn't for Brady, they wouldn't have built the new stadium and probably sold the team. Yeah, I remember the days of Drew Bledsoe. You know, I'm that old, too. And all those people. You know, for the longest time, until recently, Brady and a couple others came along and broke his record. But for the longest time, when I was growing up, all the way through the early 90s, the the quarterback with the highest completion percentage in the NFL was Kenny Anderson of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Charger Mopar is saying hello to other people. Look, Andrew Luck, there we go. Andrew Luck had a lot of potential. Never got a chance to sign. Yes, he did because he just got the crap beat out of him because the Colts have never had an offensive line. Not that I know anything about football. Um, I don't do cold plunges. I have started every day with Instead of, I was doing hot and then finishing my shower with cold water, but um, I'm told that doing the cold as long as you can stand it is better. So I've been starting off my morning shower with cold water and then after a minute or so, turning the hot water on. Um, Mike Mutzel has a lot about that. And I have a video where I talk about cold plunging uh, it's back, it's early August, um, because I met Mike and several others at the Omaha Hard to Kill Summit the last weekend in July and talked about that stuff the following week. So if you look at the videos from the first week of August, you'll find me talking about cold plunges there. I agree with Rick on carnival recipes. That's not really food freedom. People try to recreate duck food. And I can see that to a point. Yes, indeed. Um, we'll see. Uh, oh, who was I talking to in an interview? I don't remember now, but we've I've had this discussion with several people. And, oh, it was my interview with Pim. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch my interview with Pim. She has a lot to say about it. She's like the, the carnivore recipes that imitate other foods are very good for people that are starting out. Eventually, you'll wean those down and have just steak. Because I haven't had a carnivore food recipe other than keto chow in probably a year now. Well, I made that bread. Um, when was that? About three, four months ago, I made that carnivore bread that was all carnivore ingredients. And it actually turned out okay because it was made with, you know, a pound of ground beef I and pork rinds. I just ate that whole loaf of bread for my meal just to try it out. So it's, you know, it, it all depends on where you're coming from and where you're trying to get to if carnivore recipes are going to be for you or not. I don't have a hardline stance on either end of that spectrum. Yep, and people are saying happy birthday to Mike. And let's see here. Thanks to all of you turning 30, celebrating with five pounds of fatty meats tonight. That's the most I ever had in one meal. You're lightweight. Not really. I generally tend to eat about two pounds of food, whether it be a pound and a half of meat and six eggs or a pound of meat and 10 or 12 eggs or just two and a half pounds of meat. Three pounds is a lot of meat. 
I could probably get through it if the cup was good enough. We'll see what happens. They're currently ranked number six. Um, if Georgia beats Alabama, which I don't see any problem with, and Michigan beats Iowa, it all depend. It all depends on who wins that Washington, Oregon game. I think is what it's going to come down to. Um, we'll just have to see what happens. You know. They said that, if you recall, now we had no business being in the game that one year, but we ended up playing LSU with two losses that year because after we lost, I think it was Purdue we lost to, and then we lost to Michigan. I don't remember exactly, but it was the next to last or last year, the BCS, before they started the playoff. I'm looking at it going, well, there's no way we're getting the BCS championship game this year because we have two losses. But then, and there were like eight teams ahead of us in the rankings, and all eight of those teams lost. So we ended up in the championship game against LSU. LSU beat the crap out of us, but I think LSU was better than everybody that year. So you just, you never know, Craig. You just never know. People saying happy 30th to Mike. Let's see here. They should make bigger, flatter poor clients. I agree with you, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. And yes, you can make your own poor clients if you had, you know, start from a live pig and cut it up. You can cut the skins up however you like. Let's see here. Medium rare, so kind of raw. Okay, if that's the way you like it. Fantastic. And Rick's going to have some heart attack chicken. If you guys haven't seen him making his heart attack chicken or any of the other things, um, he's got some good videos on his channel for cooking. I especially like the thing where he tried to grind up the green stuff and it, <laughs> it clogged up his grinder. That's Probably my favorite video of his. Very, very funny. Um, okay, let's see here. We still got a few minutes left, and we're down to the bottom of the chat. So go ahead and get your questions in. If you have them, those of you that were late, let me grab this again and show it to you. This is one of the boots that Fitville sent me. I took out on a walk for the first time today. I like them because they're nice and warm on the inside. Like I said, I'm not wild about the 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 velcro closures because i've never had a pair of velcro shoes that held up i'll have to let you know how these hold up but i took them out for their first walk this morning and so far i haven't had any trouble i will let you know tomorrow if anything in my feet or legs hurts from walking in a new pair of shoes um i'll let you know about that tomorrow and moving forward um the new keto chow flavor is chocolate malt. Um, yeah, my discount code for those of you that weren't here at the beginning, my my link and discount code that are in the description are um, good for all of their products, not just the keto chow shake stuff, because I primarily got involved with them for the uh, the daily minerals and the electrolyte drops and that kind of stuff. So you can get a discount on those things. Um, so, you know, the, the whole reason for getting involved with Keto Chow was for discount for the electrolytes and that kind of stuff. However, the, the chocolate malt flavor is very, very good. And Buck has arrived. Hello, Buck. Yeah, and... You don't have to be a a big fan of it. It's not for everybody, but for those that want to try it, it's it's there. Let's see. No, it's not like cat chow. It's keto chow. Basically, it's a a keto meal replacement because the founder 
and creator of Keto Chow, Chris Bear, was tired of counting macros to, to stay in keto. So he made this shake product so that he could just mix it up and go. And if you ha aren't aware of it, he actually put his money where his mouth is and drank only keto chow for 100 days. He also did within that an experiment with different kinds of fat to see how they affected his uh, lab numbers. And if you go back and watch through that series, you'll find out that butter did the best for his lab numbers and um, MCT oil was the worst on lab numbers. So take that with a grain of salt. Oh, have you guys been watching? First, there was the Dr. Baker and Joe Rogan pod, um, podcast that was very good. I watched that whole thing. And then the guy that Dr. Baker mentions, give me just a second here. doing his uh, Oreo cookie experiment. I found his video and watched that. It's very funny because as you may or may not be aware, you know, the lipid hypothesis is that they have, in working with Dave Feldman on this lean mass hyper responder stuff that they're working on, their theory is that the reason these very lean people that are on a low-carb, higher fat, moderate protein diet. The reason their cholesterol, primarily the LDL lipoprotein, which is not actually cholesterol, it's the submarine that carries the cholesterol around. But the reason that number shoots way up on them is that because they're so lean, they need more energy. And when they're using fat as energy, the body increases LDL to move cholesterol around more readily to give people more fats to use as energy. That's their basic premise. And he uh, is in the middle of doing a an Oreo cookie versus statins therapy. And we don't have the final results yet, but his uh, if you watch his video, you'll find that his LDL went from in the high 300s down to 111, eating 12 Oreos a day, which kind of supports their lipid hypothesis that the reason your LDL goes up when you're, on, when you're already lean and doing a low-carb diet is the energy. It produces it to, to send more energy out to your cells more quickly. And that's what transports the fat around that your body's using for energy. And because sugar is, we're not talking about all the damage that it does, just as an energy source, this appears to bear out their hypothesis because eating 12 Oreos a day dropped his LDL down to 111 in just six weeks, which tells me that I think they're actually on the right track with their LDL lipid hypothesis theory. Don't forget to watch for coming out on the 8th is when they're having their official unveiling of the early research of Dave Feldman's uh, lean mass hyper responder um, study. The, 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 the preliminary results of that are coming out on the 8th. So I think next Saturday, let me take a quick look at my set at my calendar here. Um, oh, next Friday, one week from today. Next Friday is when they're coming out with that. So be sure to watch for that. Now it appears I've missed some stuff here. Um, see here. Ta ground meat, tenderloin, bacon, eggs, butter ordered. And some Brussels sprouts and cauliflower for the next time I'm entering a certain phase on my cycle that always throws me off. And Teresa is here, just popping in to say hi. I have a coach's Zoom. Eat fatty meat, y'all. Hello, Teresa. Glad you popped in.
I eat raw meat sometimes when I don't feel like cooking or have some of it raw as an appetizer when I can't wait for the main meal. I, I'm happy you can do that. I don't like raw meat. I just don't. I like mine cooked. Now, I will eat it medium to medium rare, but I do not like raw meat. And now I can eat my last hard boiled egg. We'll boil more tomorrow. Excellent. Uh, my quail lays so many eggs that I give them away. Excellent. I'm considering doing some quail when I get down to my homestead as well. I'm probably going to start with chickens because chickens are supposed to be the easiest thing to raise. But I've seen a lot of stuff with quail too. The set your VCR for that. OSU game at 11. I don't know what you're talking about. There's only one OSU. Oh, you must be talking about that fake OSU, Oklahoma State again. And you say that in jest, but I actually do have, there's a VCR right there. I still actually have right next to it. You can't see it, but I stacked in the stack. I have three functioning Betamax machines that are still hooked up to my TV set as well as a DVD player. Yep, I still have all the toys. I have three functioning Betamaxes. You can get quail eggs in the supermarket locally. Never tried. They're small. Yes, it takes, it takes a lot to make a meal out of quail eggs, but I've heard they're very good. I've heard quail eggs are very good. If the company that makes Oreos hear about it, they'll stick this lowers cholesterol on the label. Well, how do you think they've probably known about this for a while? Because how else would they be able to put something like Heart Healthy on Cheerios? Think about that one for a moment. And creative. So, yes, three quail eggs to one chicken egg. Usually eat 12 eggs to, to one can of sardines. Ugh, I don't like sardines, but. If I get a mess of quail eggs, I would certainly eat those. And quail eggs are a superfood. Yes, they are. I hope chickens can survive it in the Texas desert. Well, I know a lot of people in the Arizona desert that are raising chickens. Uh, so I don't see why the Texas desert would be any different. We'll see. You know, maybe I order some chickens and they all die. They all die. Um, if so, I'll have, you know, one little meal of tiny chickens. Okay, let's see here. Betamax. Those are worth a fortune. Trade them for a shipping container. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're worth a fortune or not. But I got three of them and they all work. I got two of the front loaders and I got one of the old Sony top loaders. And Rob is here. Merry Christmas, all. Merry Christmas to you, Rob. I'm glad you're here. So we're coming up. we got a few moments left here. If anybody has any last-minute questions, now's the time to get them in. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I wanted to talk about today that I haven't gotten to, but I don't think I, I did forget anything. You know, we've talked about keto chow, and they're wonderful. Um, chocolate malt flavor that was the mystery flavor. Now it's chocolate malt. And remember, my discount code through my link is good for all of their products, not just the shake mix, but all of the daily minerals and electrolyte drops and that kind of stuff you might be using. I know I use that kind of stuff every day. Um, and I will, after this post, I'll have to go in and, and change the, the shoe link. The 35% off for November ended, but they've given the first given it back to me for the first 40 people that use my link to place an order. We'll actually get an extra 5% off doing that. That's everything I want to talk about today. And yes, tell me everything about quail you know. There, I just told you everything I know about quail that you were talking to somebody else in the chat. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream today. That's what I've got for you today. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better. Today, tomorrow.
tomorrow every day. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you in the next one.